Hey there, this is Nick from Income Digs. Welcome to this tutorial. I'm gonna talk about cost codes today and why they're so essential to use within your construction business and specifically why you need to get them into QuickBooks Online. I'm gonna show you how to import cost codes into QuickBooks Online, save a lot of time, and you can also use my free download I have available. So I have a list of the cost codes that I actually use within my building and remodeling business that you can download, tweak it a little bit, and import into QuickBooks Online. Use it for QuickBooks, Builder Trend, the whole thing, all right? We're gonna get into that right now. So what is a cost code? We probably know what that is, but just generally, what are we talking about? It's a code or a category that we can attribute our expenses and our sales to so that we can break things down further. Okay, now this concept is relatively easy to understand when we think about how we estimate. Usually when we think about doing an estimate, whether we're flipping a house, whether we're doing a remodel, we're thinking in categories, right? We're thinking about how much the electric's gonna cost, the plumbing's gonna cost, and we're adding all those things up. So you're gonna use something like cost codes in your estimate. I wanna make sure that you're able to use cost codes in your actuals as well. So when you actually incur expenses, you can tag those to the correct cost code, so then we can then look at actuals versus our estimate, okay? So I have this list of cost codes here. We're gonna come back to this in a second, but let's just talk about the estimating process, right? We're probably doing some sort of cost coding during the estimate process. So I'm just gonna pop open an example here. This is an estimating dashboard that I use or something like this for my own business. And what I do is I got my list of cost codes here that I can select from, okay? And there's cost codes or product or service into subcategories and then into categories. And so everything that I'm ever going to do on a job can be broken down into one of these cost codes that then gets attributed to a category. And then what I do with that is I build out in the worksheet, this is kind of like my scope of work. Here's my accounting code, my cost code, here's what I'm doing, and here's, here's my hours, here's my labor, my quantity times a unit, cost type is either labor, material, subcontractor, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, and I can have the system automatically pick up my subcategory and category, bringing it all into a nice, neat dashboard for me to say, how much am I planning on spending on labor, materials, subcontractors, what's my total, okay? And then what's my total price is including my markup, and then maybe I'm adding some other stuff for a final price, okay? Obviously, you're gonna have a different way of doing things, but what happens is it breaks down into my categories. And what I can do with this when I'm estimating I have these categories and I say, well, what type of project is it? Okay, so if it's a kitchen, I know that I'm always going to need certain certain categories and I, I don't have anything for flooring. So that's kind of a red flag for me that I might have missed that. Okay, so you can create these kind of templates. And then, of course, we can do pivot tables and understand how much we're spending by subcategory, etc. Okay, that's the estimating side. So that part kind of makes sense. We're typically doing stuff like that. Now, it doesn't have to be this complicated. You might just have like one line for each category. That's fine, however you do it. All right, we're a little bit more complex than this. So we get our estimate here. Now we actually upload that into Builder Trend, but we'll, we won't talk too much about Builder Trend here. Just know that Builder Trend obviously has cost codes too. We're gonna have those be the same as QuickBooks. But we need to be getting cost codes in QuickBooks. Even if we're not using Builder Trend, we want to be able to be tracking by cost codes. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that today. All right, so if we look into QuickBooks, what we don't want to do if I were to look at rehab costs here, this is an example of what we don't want to do. We don't want to, in our chart of accounts, lay out, all right, I have my rehab costs, then we list out tens and tens, maybe a hundred different cost codes into accounts. We don't want to do that because it's going to completely blow up our profit and loss, okay? We want one, two, maybe three categories that we're gonna put everything. And the categories we should use Really simple, materials, labor, subcontractors, okay? Now you can use, you could just do it all in one if you want, if you wanna separate it out, fine. Okay, so what we're, we want is within our cost of goods sold, we want to have, here's my labor, here's my materials, and then I have subcontractors. This is a sample account, so there's a whole bunch of garbage in here too, but generally I want subcontractors, materials, and labor. If you just had one, you'd be okay. All right, so then where do we track our cost codes? We do that in what's called products and services. So QuickBooks Online calls it products and services. So if I go into my products and services, I've just recently deleted a whole bunch of these so that I can demonstrate the import for you. This is where when we go to log an expense, we want instead of logging it right here to construction materials, okay, I could do that, but we're going to log it right here instead, okay? 
and that's the items table. So if we have our products and services there, what we're doing is we're gaining an extra level of detail that we can then pull up into a summary. Plenty of videos on this. If you wanna check out some of those that go into a little bit more of a theory of it. Uh, but just generally speaking, uh, when it comes to that items table, if you wanna turn that on, you're gonna to go to your settings, accountant settings, you're gonna to go to expenses right here. And then right uh, here, show items table on expenses. You wanna turn that on, okay? Once that's on, now we have to add our list of products and services. That's our list of cost codes. So when I use the word products and services or I use the, the term cost code, they are the exact same thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna import here. Okay, so I'm gonna import this. Now, the import works pretty well. I encourage you to download the template if you want to. So you can download the sample template. All right, now we can do an Excel file or we can do a Google Sheet. To be honest with you, I love using Google Sheet, but uh, because I know not everybody uses Google Sheet, we're gonna do Excel. And basically, if I download this sample, just what this sample does is it shows you the mapping. So I got product and service name, sales description, the type, the sales price, the income account. Now, we're also uh, treating this as expenses too, so I'm gonna have a couple extra columns in mind. Okay, so what we need to do, let me just show you how if we were to manually add one, if we were to manually add a sample cost code, what we absolutely need to do is we need to indicate that we purchase it and then we need to tell QuickBooks which expense account it goes to. So materials or labor, et cetera. So we need to do that and that's me doing it manually. I'm gonna show you how to do that on an import, okay? So let's take our list. Here's our cost codes. We have the product service name. I have a SKU, you don't need to use SKU. Um, type is all gonna be service. The income account, absolutely essential. That's gonna be billable expense income. Let me make sure I have that um, account set up. Good, billable expense income. Okay, good. You wanna make sure your accounts are set up perfectly. So billable expense income, my expense account. I'm not gonna put anything in for these descriptions and prices or anything like that, at least not yet. Okay, let's do an import. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna download this as an Excel file and let's see how this works. All right, so I'm gonna go to products and services. Here we go, and let's go to import. All right, so it's asking for my file. Can I click and drag it in? I don't know. No. Okay, so there we go. Um, click the next button. And what I like about QuickBooks, they added this mapping feature. So they're taking a guess at what fields line up. So product and service name lines up perfectly. Yes, SKU, good, type is good. Income account goes to income account. Um, purchase description, I don't wanna do anything, so I'm gonna do no match. Expense account goes to expense account. All right, so it won't let you leave this blank, okay? So this is just picking up, I have five columns here, and let's just check, do I have one, two, three, four, five columns here, perfect. So I should be good to do this import. Now it might find some errors, let's see. What QuickBooks will do is it'll check and it will say, here's what we're about to import. Do we buy it and do we sell it? In this case, I want to say yes to everything. The reason I wanna say that I sell it is I wanna be able to mark items as billable. All right, so here's the name, the SKU coming in, the type, income account, expense account. All right, everything looks pretty good. I don't see any errors. I'm gonna click the import button. So we're importing 213 products and services or cost codes. Now, how many cost codes should you have? It's a very, very common question. You need to think about your business. I have 213, we're really, really detailed, and we do projects from start to finish, and we have costs that hit pretty much all of these categories every time. So we're estimating on that level, and we're tracking actuals on this level. If you're a painter, you're not gonna have all of these cost codes, okay? If you're doing flips, you might have a more general version. In fact, I have a download of a more general version that we used to use for our flips. If you're in new home building or if you're in end-to-end -end construction, if you have the analytics for this, then you can go ahead and do this. But remember, if you're not using the cost code, then it's kind of useless, okay? We don't wanna have it in our system if we're not picking it up. All right, so we have all these cost codes in here. Now let's just like look at one. If I were to pull on one and just see what it looks like here. So, okay, so my demo subcontractor goes to my subcontractor account, excellent. All right, so what this means is, instead of me going and creating an expense and doing contractors, 
Okay, don't do that. Instead, oops, I don't want interest paid either. Instead of that, we're gonna do demolition subcontract, okay? And when I put in a $5,000 expense for demolition subcontract, let's do it uh, 65 Central Park. Okay, when I do that, I'm gonna save and close. If I go to my, uh, my product projects, I had some other accounts here. Actually, let's just go to my profit and loss would be the fastest way for me to get that. So there's my subcontractors right here, okay? So we're benefiting by, I don't have a gigantic p and I have subcontractors, and when I drill down into it, I can then see, if I go by product or service, what it was. And to see that at a higher level, if we go to my projects and we go to this version, if I go to my rehab expenses, and then show by product or service, I get all this detail that shows me how much I've spent on all of these, okay? I'm gonna show you this in, in some other contexts as well. Okay, so that's how we do the import. Now, one other thing on the products and services, you can also make use of categories. Unfortunately, you can't import the categories, okay? So if you want a category, you can do that, um, but you'd have to kind of do this manually. So let's do like one prep and prelim, okay? Now, the good news is that QuickBooks will let you bulk at it. Okay, so if I have all my prep and prelim cost codes, I can quickly assign them. Let me show you that. Okay, so if I go back to my products and services, I can look at anything that has a 10 in it. You know, I can grab all these and I can batch action assign to prep and prelim. Okay, and then that shows up like that. All right. So um, the categories are nice as well. But we need to get these cost codes in here and we want to be able to be tracking our expenses to them, not to the account, but to the cost code. When we do that, it opens up a world of possibilities. So I'm looking at a project here. We have our income and then we have our, our cost of goods sold. If I drill down into this cost of goods sold, again, I can group by my product or service and I get a whole ton of analytics on how much I'm spending on all of these categories, okay? And it only shows up in a few different accounts on my p &L. It's kind of the best of both worlds, all right? And so we bring that into QuickBooks and that's really, really useful. If we bring it into um, Builder Trend, we can track against a budget. And what I actually like to do, I have a separate video on this as well, is I use an external reporting template. I'll export the QuickBooks information assigned to cost codes and I'll bring it into something like this where I have a really cool dashboard where I'm able to see how much I'm spending by vendor and then by cost code. And I can see all these cool graphs and charts and understand where I am doing all of my spending against our budgets, etc. Okay, so cost codes are absolutely essential to tracking expenses for your construction business, materials, subcontractors, and labor as well. So this is how we get them into QuickBooks. Definitely take my downloads, the more complex one, the simple one, whatever you want, and uh, tweak them if you want to, and then import them into QuickBooks Online. The import's gonna save you a ton of time, just takes a little bit of prep to get right. My template's set up for it, but make sure that you have the correct cost codes and that you're mapping accordingly. I'd love to hear your questions on cost codes. If you have any recommendations as well, what kind of cost codes you're using or any kind of strategies you have, put them in the comments here. I monitor those regularly. I'd love to hear what you think. Be sure to check out all the free resources available at IncomeDigs.com, including our end-to-end -end bookkeeping and accounting course for builders and remodelers, Builder Books Academy. So we're launching that and we're really, really excited to have that. That's end-to-end -end everything we know about bookkeeping and accounting for your business. If you're a bookkeeper, or a remodeler or a builder, you're gonna to wanna to check that out, all right? Until next time, I will see you on the next video.